Good afternoon and welcome to our Wednesday worship and prayer on this, the 25th of March, 2020. These videos uploaded each week to our Facebook page are designed to encourage us during this time of great turmoil and designed to unite us together as a body of faith, as the body of Christ at Viewmont Baptist during a time when we cannot meet together face to face. So please feel free to share this video uh, as we will be uploading these each and every Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock to our Facebook page. I'd like to share with you a passage of scripture from the Gospel of John this afternoon and offer a little bit of time of reflection upon it. And then Hegiani is going to come lead us in prayer. Jimmy will lead us in a hymn. And then we will close in prayer together. In the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, we are not really introduced, but reacquainted with a familiar name. John chapter 20, picking up in verse 24. Now Thomas, called Didymus, was one of the twelve and was with the, not with the disciples when, the, when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and this time Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And then Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Thomas is such an interesting character in the Gospels. We find him mentioned a couple of times in John's Gospel and each time the question of faith is before him. This is a fellow who's walked with Jesus. This is a fellow who has talked with Jesus. This is a fellow who has been with Jesus at so many points in his own ministry in and around Israel. And now he's questioning whether or not Jesus is really alive. We all have doubts. He's called Doubting Thomas for a reason because he doubts the resurrection of Jesus. And we all have doubts. Each and every one of us are prone to wonder and to wander and to worry. We all have struggles and questions uh, with fear and with anxiety. And Thomas... Thomas must have been wondering at this point in his own life, what have these last three years even been about? Have these last three years been a waste of my time to follow this man Jesus around, listening to him and watching him? What's the future going to hold? Everything has now changed. There has been this moment when everything is now different. And what will tomorrow be like? He sure probably asks himself the same questions we are asking ourselves right now. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. We are at a complete loss. But the thing about Thomas, the thing about him in the midst of his faith and in the midst of his fear is that he has been with Jesus all along. He has walked with Jesus. He has talked with Jesus. He has plenty of experience of faith to pull from. You see, sometimes we need to be reminded of how God has moved in the past in order to be assured of how God will move in the present. We all have struggles and questions of faith and even now, maybe more than ever, as the world around us seems to be falling apart and even closing in, we have worries and concerns. Where was Jesus in the midst of Thomas' struggles with doubt and faith? He walks right into the room. He is as present as he has ever been. 
Jesus walks into this room where his disciples are gathered and there he sees them and they see him in the midst of trouble and worry and doubt and questions of faith, we must know that he is still our Emmanuel, that he is still our God who is with us. Where is Jesus in the midst of troubling times? Jesus walks right in the room. And the troubles do not stop him from doing so. Thomas's doubt does not keep Jesus out of the room. In fact, that's what brings Jesus into the present moment. He is as present as he has ever been. That's true then, and that is true now. The difference, the difference here for Thomas and for the other disciples is that Jesus is present as the resurrected one, the one that will have no barrier of keeping him from being present. There's nothing that will stop him from walking into the room and being there with those who are crying out. This morning, in my own personal devotional time, I was reading a devotion, and the writer said that God is still in the comfort business. God still in the comfort business. It's not a sense of God making us comfortable, but God bringing comfort when times are tough. God being present in the midst of struggles and worry and concern. And that, my friends, that is the word Jesus speaks to Thomas and to us. Notice that when Jesus walks in the room, his first word is peace. Peace. We're in a day when information is flying about. We're all receiving emails and phone calls and texts and watching the news and seeing all of this come in around us and we are receiving so much information at such a fast rate of communication that maybe we need to stop and instead of looking for more information, look for the presence of God. Be open to the presence of God. For he still walks in to troubled times and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is a time when we are all concerned and worried. Maybe our time of prayer should be focused focused on where we're seeing God at work, how we're seeing the Holy Spirit move. And may we take great comfort in knowing that just as God moved then, God will move now. The things that we have seen Jesus do in the past, Jesus is still doing, still at this time. So I invite you to continue to join us in prayer. We have asked our congregation to be in prayer every morning at 8 o'clock and every evening at 8 o'clock to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit of God to bring hope and healing to our world, our nation, and our community. So let this be a time when we sit and know the presence of God, hear the words of Jesus in a time when we need to hear them most. Peace be with you. There's nothing that keeps Jesus from walking into the room and stilling and calming all of our fears. I'm going to ask Hajiani if she would to come and lead us in a time of prayer. Amen. Even before we pray, I would, like, I would like to ask you at this moment to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Jesus' last words in the book of Matthew are, Jesus said, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I want to ask you to imagine Jesus right now in front of you. I want to imagine his eyes looking at you. 
my brothers and sisters, I'm asking you to imagine, to intentionally imagine that. But we know that our Lord Jesus is here right now. And he's right there with you. So I'm asking you, what would you thank him for? So as we pray together and as the Holy Spirit brings to your mind reasons to be thankful, please voice those reasons to him. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for who you are. You are gracious. You are loving. You are our creator. And you are our hope. For your presence, for your presence here, now with us, we are so thankful. For your word that is true, we are so grateful too, Father. Your word point us to you. And we thank you for that. Father, we also thank you for the people you bring into our lives. Many of them are such a blessing to us. Many of them enrich our days, encourage us, and we are grateful for each, each and every person. Father, for those relationships that need healing, that are difficult, we also bring, before, bring them before you. And we also thank you for each one of them because we believe we believe those relationships are the one who offer us the opportunity to learn about forgiveness, about grace, about your power, about the power of prayer, and about trusting you. We also thank you for the blessings that we cannot see, and they are many. You see all. I believe that sometimes you deliver us from situations that we will never even know. So for them, thank you, God. For the privilege to share the gospel, even in times that are so difficult, such as this, we are also grateful. We thank you because we believe we are called to share, and you are giving us the opportunity to do that. May our eyes be open, may our hearts be open, and actually may our hearts be on fire to share who you are and what you have done. And may the hope that what is ahead of us, the victory, fill our hearts with hope and gratitude each and every day. The truth is we do not know, but the truth is also you do. And our trust is in you. For those who are dilig diligently working with those who need medical care, we also thank you. We pray for strength, for wisdom, and for deliverance for them also. Holy Spirit of God, thank you for the assurance that we are never alone. Thank you for the assurance that you are actively working not only here, but in the world. May our eyes be focused on you. For those who are sick, tired, discouraged, and in fear, we pray for peace. We pray for hope. We pray for trusting you. We pray for comfort. And we pray all that in the precious name of the one who promised he would be with us always, Jesus. Amen.
want to thank you for joining us for this time of worship and prayer on this Wednesday afternoon, March the 25th, 2020. Again, you will find these videos uploaded each Wednesday that we are not able to be together as a church family uploaded to our Facebook page and to our YouTube channel. If you are not receiving emails from our church and would like to be included on that email communication list, please make sure you contact the church office. As always, we are praying, and we are praying diligently for the Holy Spirit of God to bring both healing and hope in a time of great trouble and turmoil. And may we rest assured that we indeed have a friend in Jesus who is with us, who brings peace in the midst of troubled times. Our custom at Viewmont is each time we are together for worship, uh, we do have a call and response, and we would like to close out this day with that same call and response. So I invite you to join me in saying, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Will you join me for closing prayer? Holy Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, we come to you this day knowing that in you there is power and there is hope and there is peace. And we ask, O oh God, that you will move in a mighty way that your spirit would stir among us and that the name of Jesus would bring healing, would bring hope and salvation. We thank you, O oh God, that you are ever present even in times of trouble and you are with us now. And now, as you have taught us, we boldly pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.